Hello everyone. In this video, I will try to link the relationship between materials taught in signals and system course, such as Laplace transform, convolution, Fourier transform, and materials taught in digital signal processing, such as the Z transform, discrete Fourier transform, and hopefully by linking them all together, the fragmented pieces of picture and information will get together to form the complete, beautiful, powerful picture of signals and system. So let's start to show first the importance of signals and system. First, signal and system course cover only the input signal, which could be in the time domain I of T, or it could be of three dimensional or two dimensional, like images or video, I, X, Y, and Z. And also we will cover the system and the output signal. Again, it could be in the time domain or it could be in three dimension, X, Y, Z. We will not cover sensors or actuators. But to see the importance of input and system and output, the purpose is you pick up a signal, you cannot make any sense out of it. Then you design a system to process this signal, to give you another signal that you can look at or hear or read that make a lot of sense and give you information about the source that produces this signal. For example, the heart, when it contract and expand, it generate electric field because the charge distribution in the heart. If you look at this electric field, it will make no sense to you. But with the sensors, which is electrode put in the patient body, that will pick up this electric field. So that will be the input. Now the system will be the electrocardiogram. ECG will process this input and give you an output that is a plot of ECG signal that the physician can see and conclude something about the heart condition. In this case, the, what is the actuator? It's the monitor, the screen that the physician is looking at, or the paper, the printer. Another example. So that's the power of signals and system. You see it in everywhere in your life, in every field. So now let's focus now in the input signal and the system and the output signal. In the continuous system, we have an input X of T. We have a system described by the impulse response H of T, and then it gives you an output Y of T. In the discrete digital system, now X of T will be sampled, so now you have X of N. Only pieces of information of X of T, maybe every one millisecond. Sampling interval will be one millisecond. Same thing H of N. Now the output Y of N will be just, we will see the convolution of X of N and H of N, or Y of T will be the convolution of X of T and H of T. Now when we say synthesize or design, the client will tell you, I have this input, I want you to build a system for me that will give me this desired output. Then you are synthesizing the system. Now analysis, you already have the system, you have the input and you are trying to analyze the system to figure out what is the output. Then this is the analysis. And just to give you a simple idea about the system, it could be electrical system like this. The input here could be just a voltage X of T, the output, maybe you are interested in the current Y of T, or could be the output, the voltage across the capacitor. So we model it, we use Ohm's law and some circuit theory, and we come up with this differential equation that describe the relationship between the output Y and the input X. And if the system is very complicated, then these two could be 10. So we say the system of 10th order. Same thing here, the mechanical system. We can model it. That means we find the differential equation or any equation that describe, relate the output Y to the input X. And again, the more complex the system, the higher the order. Now, after you do the modeling, it's a mathematical equations. You really don't care what is the system. 
You don't care that system could be a biological system. You are monitoring the flow of sodium and potassium through the cell wall and the action potential generated by the nerve, or it could be a financial system or a political system. So you model it, you come up with a differential equation of different order. From here, whatever you process for this, it will be the same. It doesn't matter what kind of system you are dealing with. It will be the same. In general, if it's a second order, we can solve this differential equation, basically find what is the output for a given input in the time domain. We can also find the system impulse response, H of T. We can also find the transfer function, H of S, or the frequency response, H of omega, if the system is simple, like second, third order. But if the system is very complex of fifth, seventh, eighth order, then we analyze it in different domain, not the time domain, but we analyze it in the Laplace domain or the Fourier domain and the Z domain. But let's start with analysis in the time domain. So I have the input X of T. I know what's the impulse response of the system H of T. I want the output. What will be the output? And here the impulse response, it means if I excite this system by an impulse like this, a quick voltage for like nanosecond and watch what's the output. In this case, that will be the impulse response H of T. It could be like oscillation at the output. It could be rise then decay slowly. And that tell you about the system. So if I have the input X of T, I have the impulse response H of T, I can find the output by convolution, which is this is the equation. And these basically mean you flip the input around the Y axis here, and then you slide it as you change tau, in this case T, you slide this input here, you integrate, basically you find the overlap area, and you get a value of Y of T for a specific time if T was here. Then you slide it here and here and here and so forth. It's something like this. So you take the input X of T and you rotate it around the vertical axis minus tau, something like this. Then as T change, basically you slide it. You multiply, you integrate, you find the common area between these two. You want to find it for the output for another value of T. You slide it further, multiply, integrate and so forth until they don't overlap anymore where the output now becomes zero. So that's basically what's convolution. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint slide. So that's the convolution in the continuous. Now, how about in the discrete or in the digital? Well, we use the sampling theorem and we sample this continuous signal and sampling theorem basically says you look at the highest frequency or the bandwidth of this signal, and then you take a sample twice that frequency. For example, if that was a speech signal, the highest frequency in a human speech is 20,000 hertz, then I will sample it 40,000 per second, and I will get these samples. Same thing I will do for the impulse response. I take these samples. Now, if I want to find Y of N, it's just this convolution. So it is the same as this one, except integration becomes summation. X of t, it becomes x of n. So I take x of n, which is this one, and I reflect it around the vertical axis and slide it by one, slide this, and multiply by one unit, two unit, three unit, four unit, and multiply and sum. And that would give me the output at different instant of sampling interval. If the sampling interval is one millisecond, then I will get the output at one millisecond, two millisecond, three millisecond, four, five, and so forth. So that is the relationship between continuous and discrete. That's the first step is the sampling theorem. And if I finished processing X of N or find Y of N, how do I get back to the continuous signal? That is interpolation. So I have X of N. I multiply it by a sync function, and we will discuss that more in detail. And if I sum these, I will get exactly the continuous signal without loss if I follow the sampling theorem. And we call this function interpolation. Okay, now let's link the Laplace and the Z domain. So 
we learned that it's easy to analyze the system in the Laplace domain in the continuous case. So I take the signal x of t, I find the Laplace x of s, and find h of t, find the Laplace transform h of s. Now the output is very simple to find. I don't even need a, con a convolution. It's a very simple algebraic multiplication of x of s and h of s. And that's the power of the Laplace domain. So let's see what is Laplace. So you start with the signal, your sensor pick. So it could be one dimensional speech. To find the Laplace of x of t, which is x of s, you carry out this integration. So what does this integration mean? It means I want to know if this signal is present in x of t. And that signal, s here, is sigma j omega. It has a decay. Sigma is a decay like this, or it could be a growth, and omega tell you the oscillation. And sigma can have any value, minus 2, minus 3, or plus 1, plus 2. And omega can have any value. It could be a 1,000 hertz, or a 1,000 radians, or 2 pi times 1,000. It tell you the oscillation, how many cycles per second. So for a specific S, maybe sigma minus 2 and omega 5. And I want to what is that? That means how much of this signal present here? This integral basically tell you, you multiply x of t, I multiply this by this one, and then I integrate. The integration will tell me the area after I multiply them. And I will get a value, and that value just tell me how much of this signal present here. Then I need to find another signal, maybe a higher oscillation and a faster decay rate. I do the same thing again. And if I try to plot x of s, now it will be two-dimensional, a surface, because I have two parameters, sigma and omega. For different value of sigma, different value of omega, I get something like this. And basically, this peak tell me the system here, h of s, will respond strongly to a signal with this sigma and this omega. And signal with this sigma and this omega, like here, will be attenuated. And that's x of s. Now let's see, after we find the y of s, how do I get back y of t? Because we human don't see these signals. We want to hear or see it has to be in the time domain or in the space domain. So then I do the inverse Laplace transform. So y of s, multiply in a set of e minus s, it's e s, and integrate, which is similar to this one, duality, except the minus become positive. And it's going to be a contour integral. And then I will get back the signal y of t. It's easier to visualize this in the summation. Basically, that integral says, for every possible E s of t, I multiply it by its strength. Then I sum for a different s i, different signal like this, and for another different, and so forth. Each one of these will have a different value here. And if I sum them up, I get y of t, the signal. Those are the same, except this is approximation to this one. Okay, now let's link the Laplace to the z domain. First, I convert this x of t to x of n, discrete signal in the time domain, by doing this simple operation. That means t, I take only a sample every capital T, that capital T is the sampling interval. And I do this one here, e s of t, e to the power of s will become the z, simple. And this here, and this equation will become this. See, x of s, if I convert e s to z, that will be x of z. Integration will become summation. When I do the sampling, t is n of t, x of t will be x of n. Here I omit capital T because we know it's sampled every one millisecond or every one nanosecond. And e s become the z and minus n. t, this little t is n capital T again. We drop the capital T because that's no one, so that will be n. And that's the relationship between the Laplace domain and the z domain. Laplace for a continuous signal, z domain for a discrete signal. And if I try to plot x of z here, it will look something, this is the region of convergence, but it will look a surface in inside this circle. So it's like all these now will be plotted inside here. Let me see if I can plot something or simple. So it could be something like this. Imagine it as a surface. This is like height. And here it will be just a replica of this, exactly the same. Same thing like here. Everything here is the same as this. For positive omega and negative omega, it's symmetrical. 
And when you look at this plot, it basically tell you how the system respond to different value of Z by looking at the surface, the amplitude at every point of Z. The radius of these will be determined by E sigma. And this omega here, in this here, it go from minus infinity to infinity. Here it will go only from zero to pi. That will cover this omega from zero to pi. Now, after the system now in the Z domain is the same thing. That's X of Z, that's H of Z. So if I want to find the output, it's just a simple multiplication in the Z domain. Now, if I want to go back the signal in the time domain, I do the inverse Z transform and which is a contour integral of whatever surface here that is represented Y of Z and I get Y of N. Okay. Now let's move to the Fourier transform and the link between the Laplace transform and the Fourier transform is the following. You said sigma zero. Now in the Fourier transform, it doesn't decay or exponentially grow. This we call the transient response. Like if you excite the system at the beginning, it could be nanosecond, one microsecond, the outputs will grow slowly, then give you the steady state. So if I don't care about the transient response at the beginning, at the end, I just care about the steady state, then sigma is zero and they just focus on EJ omega, which is the Fourier transform. And that's here. So what it is, let's start with the signal in the time domain, that's X of T. If I said, put sigma zero, then S domain become the Fourier domain or the Fourier transform. If I want to find X of omega, the frequency content of this signal X of T, I carry out this integral. And what's this integral mean? It basically mean E minus J omega, I can convert it to a sinusoidal signal, ES zero, so it would become like this, no decay, sigma is zero, not S. When sigma is zero, no decay, so that's a sinusoidal. I multiply this by X of T, that's the multiplication, then integrate. I will get a number, it will tell me how strong this signal present here. Then I change omega to a different frequency, maybe higher or lower. And again, I multiply, I integrate, I get another, another value for X at specific omega. And that tell me how strong is the signal. So now, see that was the Laplace domain, all this. Now, when you set sigma zero, it will be only that line. And that is what we call the X of omega, the magnitude, only this line. And basically this will tell me the frequency content in the signal X of T, that red line here. For system analysis, I find the Fourier transform of X of T, the Fourier transform of the impulse response H of T. Now we call this the frequency response of the system. Here, H of S, we call it the transfer function of the system. So if I want to find the output, I just multiply the input X of omega time H of omega, and I get the output, simple multiplication. Now, after I do the processing and the analysis, now if I want to find Y of T, I do the inverse Fourier transform. And it's easier to carry this integral than the, La the inverse Laplace transform, because now you are integrated along omega, not sigma and omega. And what this mean, it means you add all frequency component, y of omega, it's a strength and shift. If you add them all, you get back your signal y of t. So let's find the equivalent of the Fourier transform in the discrete time domain. We call it the discrete time Fourier transform, which is different than the discrete Fourier transform. This will be the next slide. Make sure you make a distinction between discrete time Fourier transform and discrete Fourier transform. So to get the discrete time Fourier transform, again, I sample X of T with this sampling rate. And now this omega become this shape omega. Let's, I will call this the continuous omega. This is the digital omega, just to make a distinction between them. Now this continuous omega could be the range from zero hertz all the way to two pi F max. If that was a speech, that F max would be 20,000 hertz for human. Now the discrete time Fourier transform, the range for omega become from zero to pi. So from zero to infinity or to 20,000, it will be all mapped to zero to pi. Then I, instead of X continuous omega, I get X digital omega. And the math, 
how do I get from here x of n to x of omega is this equation. So if I want to find the frequency content x of omega of this of this discrete signal here, I just multiply x of m n by this one here. So now I have e omega n. So instead of t continuous, it's n. So it's imagine you are taking a sample here, a sample here, and one here, another sample here, another here. So you get these samples. You multiply these two, you will get x value for a specific omega you increase this omega you get more oscillation you gain you multiply you sum you get another value and if you plot x of omega it will look something like this but instead of from 0 to 20,000 or to infinity now it would be from 0 to pi so that x of omega the range is from 0 to pi and from 0 to minus pi it's a replica of both and if I want to analyze the system in this domain then the output will be just the multiplication x of omega time h of omega and after I do the processing and all these I can get back to y of n the discrete signal y of n by doing the inverse discrete Fourier transform and again this is, can be done by computer very easily okay so this is the relationship between the Fourier transform in the continuous d domain and the Fourier transform in the discrete time domain now let's find the relationship between the discrete time Fourier transform and the discrete Fourier transform basically I don't want that continuous x of omega I don't want the processing the storage is huge so can I have this x omega to be discrete only samples just like in the time domain and instead of have this million or billion of data point I have only these limited points that represent this can we do the same thing instead of having this continuous x of omega millions of data point can I represent it maybe by 10 20 points that's what the discrete Fourier transform so this is just a replica here this is let's say another signal x of omega so the discrete Fourier transform basically I take samples of this x of omega to get x of k so omega this continuous omega now I sample it with a sampling frequency omega zero so I take a sample every omega zero so that's a dc zero then I move omega zero that could be pi over a hundred I take a sample two pi over a hundred and so forth so you take many many samples here that you are sampling in the frequency domain you will go from discrete time Fourier transform to discrete Fourier transform and wherever you see omega this continuous omega now replace it by omega zero k and that is the same as this one except instead of omega omega 0k now instead of having a continuous spectrum in the range from 0 to pi you will have a discrete spectrum so instead of this continuous spectrum now you're going to have this discrete spectrum x of k after you do the transformation from discrete time Fourier transform to discrete Fourier transform now I can analyze this input signal and process this input signal by this system it may enhance certain frequency attenuate certain frequency and give me an output that output is just simple multiplication of x of k and h of k and after I do all the processing how do I get back this in the time domain I do the inverse discrete Fourier transform or the fast Fourier transform and this is the integral same thing you take all frequency present you multiply by the strength of this frequency present you sum them up you will get y of n you will get y of n will be something like this maybe shape change because you process it and the discrete Fourier transform there is algorithm that carry out these in a very fast way we call it the fast Fourier transform so if you are using MATLAB FFT it's this is the operation and this is the inverse fast Fourier transform IFFT this is the operation and again after you get y of n you use the sampling theorem I can get y of t back again okay let's visualize what we did here by plot so you have the signal in the time domain x of t you do the Fourier transform in the continuous you get x of omega if I take 
samples of this signal x of t now it's discrete or digital now i do the discrete time fourier transform so i get x of omega which is this one but here the range goes as i said from zero to b which is the bandwidth that bandwidth could be a million could be twenty thousand hertz now for the discrete time fourier transform this is mapped all the way to pi so if that's one million it will be mapped to pi 900 thousand it would be mapped to something less than pi and so forth if i take sample of x of omega now i get x of k that's the discrete fourier transform or just the fast fourier transform and if i do the inverse i can get back x of n and it will be a replica but that is all we care about that data point here in the sampling theorem it's very important how do you determine the sampling interval so the sampling rate should be twice the highest frequency so twice this b 2b so that sampling interval will be 1 over 2b same thing here it's very very important what is your sampling rate in the frequency domain because you don't want aliasing overlapping of each other and f of s the sampling interval in the frequency domain f0 it's 1 over t0 which is the length of the signal in the time domain so if that signal is one millisecond long then one over one millisecond is 1000 hertz so you take every 1000 hertz a sample then we will be in good shape i can get from x of k to x of n then from x of n back to the x of t no aliasing aliasing mean these become on top of these so you cannot get this back again okay so in this slide in many several slides i try to show the link between materials we learned in signal and system and material we learned in the digital signal processing course of course there are more of system design we didn't discuss how do we design the filters and when we say filters it doesn't mean just a filter out no it could be a complex system that enhance certain frequency and decay certain frequency or it can detect certain words or certain signature in a signal and that's what we mean by the system so we haven't discussed this so the next slide i will summarize everything in one slide hopefully it will not be confusing but you can play the video again until you see it so we start with a continuous signal x of t that could be h of t the impulse response of the system that could be y of t the output we do the laplace transform we get x of s how do we get x of s we carry out this integration so i have x of t i do this integration i get x of s let's say i want now from x of s i want to get back x of t i do the inverse laplace transform so how do i get x of t from x of s i do this integral i can also do the fourier transform so i have x of t i do the fourier transform to get the frequency content x of omega by carrying out this integral and after i process x of t if i want to get now from x of omega x of t again i do the inverse fourier transform so i have x of omega maybe i process it i change it now how i get the time domain i carry out this integration what's the relationship between x of s and x of omega between the laplace transform and the fourier transform i just replace s here by j omega that means sigma is zero then i will get this integral now let's move to the discrete now if i take x of t and use the time sampling and the sampling theorem then i get x of n value at specific time i can do now discrete time fourier transform for this x of n and this is the integral and if i process x of omega enhance attenuate and i want to get back the signal in the time domain the discrete then i do the inverse discrete time Fourier transform and this is the integral what is the relationship between the Fourier transform and the discrete time Fourier transform it just time sampling to move from x of t to x of n wherever you see t you replace it by n of t and then omega here become this digital omega that omega can go from zero to infinity that omega can go only from zero to pi now instead of discrete time Fourier transform I can do the discrete Fourier transform so now x of omega is not continuous anymore in the frequency domain it's discrete in the frequency domain x of n is the same x of n here what's the relationship between these and these is the following I just sampled omega frequency sampling every k omega zero 
So I took sample maybe every 10 hertz or the equivalent of 10 hertz. Here it will be maybe every 0.1 pi, 0.2 pi, 0.3 pi or so forth. If I have x of k, can I get x of omega back? Yes, we do frequency interpolation. If I take enough sample, then I can get back x of omega exactly by frequency interpolation. Now, can I get x of n back from x of k? Yes, I do the inverse discrete Fourier transform and that's the integral. Now, if I have x of n here, can I get back x of t? Yes, we do a time interpolation and that is related to the sampling theorem. I can get exactly x of t from these samples and if I follow the sampling theorem rule. Now, if I want to find the Z transform, I have this discrete, I carry out the Z transform, I get X of Z here. And if I process, I can get back X of N from X of Z by using the inverse Z transform. So I have X of Z, I store it, now I want to construct X of N again, I construct it this way, using this integral. So now, what is the relationship between X of Z for this Z transform for a discrete signal and the Laplace transform of a continuous signal. That's the relationship. I can move from the Laplace domain to the Z domain if I do this operation. First time, it becomes discrete time. So I take a sample of X of T every N capital T. And capital T, again, this is the sampling interval. And E of S becomes Z. That means E of S is a plot in omega and sigma, z is a circular plot, where this radius is e sigma, and this omega become this digital omega. And that's the relationship between the Laplace domain and the z domain. So this slide shows the relationship between the materials in signal and system, continuous, and the materials in the digital signal processing, DSP, discrete. The only thing is missing here is the system design. It's the finite impulse response and the infinite impulse response, the FIR and the IIR. And that we will learn it in the digital signal processing. Now I will make several lecture to cover the material in the signal and system Laplace and Fourier transform and several lectures that cover Z transform and the discrete Fourier transform. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in next video. Bye bye.